Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of The Hand of Merlin. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today after we uh, d dealt with enemies. No problem whatsoever. We are out of money and out of food, though. You are suddenly surrounded by a cheering crowd that lifts you up, singing and comparing you to the legendary heroes of Carabrock, Ebracus, Brutus, Green Shield, even Arthur himself. Evidently, the siege is lifted, and you have helped to accomplish this great victory. And we're going to enter the city. The city's best traders are found on its main marketplace, where the great statue f stood before it was destroyed in the siege. You can could also choose to explore the city's streets, but they are known to be a warren, easy to get lost in. Uh, well, we do need to explore, first and foremost. Give me a... Uh... Oh, there's only one ship. Wow. Give me the blacksmith, please. Okay, maybe that's uh, going to get us money. You get lost in the narrow, winding streets of Carabrock. Are you kidding me? Wow. You retire to the Wolf's Eye Inn to gather your strength for the journey ahead. The innkeeper, knowing that you helped lift the siege, offers you a free meal. You should have offered me a lot more free... Uh, more, a lot more... I, uh, money? Get, ooh, that's really bad. We're all screwed. Oh no. Uh, we got Warcry that gains a uh, powerful. That is awesome, actually. Go for that. That is great. And it's a new ability as well, which is always good. We have Point Blank, Hunter's Mark. Honestly, I like that. Smoke Cloud. Creates a smoke cloud, applying four of Shrouded, which uh, loses if. Uh, Minus four evasion and plus four. What the heck? How is that minus four? Oh, a minus four accuracy, sorry. Uh, lasts two turns, but also gains evasion. So we get a Hunter's Mark, because I like that a lot. And we have a Festus Salts that restores armor. Honestly, I like that a lot as well. And Caustic Coating that applies plus four damage dealt to armor thing. These all have charges, which, uh, yeah, and we've got the Hallow. Uh, let's restore armor. Let's go with the Festus thing. I like this combination. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. What is not pretty good is... Oh my god. We're all gonna die of death. Or maybe not. Entering a wide clearing, you come upon an old tree surrounded by a circle of small stones. Its branches are thick and twisted, casting strange shadows on the mossy ground. A frog seems to be croaking somewhere nearby. Sound reminds you eerily of human speech. Before the tree, food has been laid out. Roasted hair, honey, and a pail of milk. It is still fresh, though you cannot see any other travelers nearby. And we're going to take the food. You take the food. Whatever purpose it served under the tree cannot be greater than the purpose that drives you onwards. That is also true. I didn't think about it like that, but it is absolutely the case. I can't believe we have five food. Uh, we don't have money, but that's potentially less of an issue. It is a huge issue, actually. This this is this start is, is very is being very very punishing. Let's go over here to Lin Lida, or potentially pronounced another way. I'll be on tourists. Visit every city named location in Albion. Lovely. Your journey has brought you to the most renowned lake in all of Albion, perhaps even the world. It was here that the Lady of the Lake granted Arthur his sword, Excalibur, and here it was returned after the Battle of Camlan. Perhaps she will aid you in your quest, as she did Arthur in his. A small road leads down to the lake shore, passing by a lonely chapel. I will follow the road, naturally. A bald, one-eyed priest sits on a rock near the chapel, contemplating the lake. King Galahad had the chapel built to honor the lady, he says, but the lady is not of our faith, and he knows it. He comes here sometimes and looks at her from afar. She always appears when those touched by Merlin's hand are nearby. See, there, she awaits your coming. Well, that's good. I'm going to approach the lake then. A woman is waiting for you at the lake. She is clothed in white Semite. Semit. It's a cloth. I do not know how to pronounce it. Her skin so pale it almost appears blue. There is a tired smile upon her face. It is good to see you again, Merlin, she says. If only in spirit. We are much diminished, all of us. Yet we abide, and there is hope in that. Her voice is ancient, and she speaks in the oldest tongue of all this world. 
You sense that she's speaking quietly in order to protect you. Her true voice could kill you. I'm gonna ask for help. The Lady of the Lake gazes out across the water. I have a fragment of you, Merlin. A small memory of our time together long ago. I will return it to you to help you regain your strength, Merlin. I do not know how much you remember, but Morgana acted as she did out of belief, not hatred. When you find her, do not go to war against her. Mm, I'll try to remember that. I'm going to accept the gift. We got an extra shard and we got an extra bit of mana. Merlin's spirit descends as a flood of memories washes over you. All that you are is blotted out. You were powerful once. Far more powerful than you will ever be again. You were incandescent. A sun burning away the darkness across a billion worlds at once. You shaped destinies. You manipulated trajectories. You could have stopped the cataclysm. The memories are painful, inhuman, like staring into a shattered mirror. Merlin's spirit recedes, and I'm gonna wake up. As you leave, the lady vanishes back into the still waters of the lake. Farewell, you hear her say. I return to my sleep. Come to me again if you wish, in some other world. And to you, Knights of Merlin, good fortune. May you fare better than beloved Arthur, and may your deeds not be lost to history, though you yourselves will be. The water does not ripple. And we're going to continue on our journey. Essence available. It is. But I can't do anything about it. While... Can I do anything about it? While I'm in this mode? Spend an essence to unlock this spell. Apparently I can. Well, I... I'm very bad. I'm very bad. Um, let's see. Black... We definitely need a, a tier 3. Let's see. Ha Halo... Deals 15 damage to all units in a ring-shaped area, leaving a damaging ground effect. That's pretty decent. Anointment restores all armor points to an ally. To a single ally, though. It's not that great. Uh, select a point. Pull all enemies in the area towards that point. Deal 8 damage and apply 2 stacks of maimed, which reduces their power and reduces their move. Uh, actually, Black Hole is probably better. And it will look cool, so... There we go. We now have three spells. Hopefully. I can't see them from here. It's fine. We're gonna move on. Let's go to the regular node. Node that is corrupted, not note. Node. The spirit of Merlin whispers in your dreams, guiding you towards the village of Birgelston, potentially. Merlin senses the corruption influence of or a corrupting influence of the cataclysm in this place. Somewhere there's a tear in the veil between the worlds. And I'm gonna enter the village. Could Merlin's spirit be mistaken? Nothing seems amiss in this place. The villagers are going about their lives, and even the telltale signs of the cataclysm are absent. This air smells fresh, and the trees are full of bright green leaves. I will investigate the town. You are approached by a young man. I'm told you were asking whether there's been anything strange happening, he says nervously. Truth is, there's been trouble at the old prison, the one built by Arthur's war against Lancelot. Or for Arthur's war, anyway. They always said it was haunted, but now something's moving in there. And the most extraordinary sounds and smells emerge. We had to lock the door. If you could help us, we would be most grateful. And we're going to agree to help. Uh, to help. Two men stand guard at the prison entrance, gripping their spears apprehensively. "'Twas just sounds and smells at first, one of them says apologetically. We thought it was badgers. I'm going to enter the dungeon. One of the guards unlocks the door, his hands trembling, and leads you inside. Here, the signs of the cataclysm are abundant. The tear must have happened underground and slowly spilled into the dungeon. "'I fear it is not badgers after all.' The guard murmurs. Yes, I mean, hopefully it isn't. There's it's toads and wyverns and uh, the mandrakes and red caps. All bad things. All real bad things. Why are they going first? It's bad. Don't 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 go first. Hmm. Okay. So, um, can't move the camera to the left, which is kind of bothersome because I like having everybody at the center of my screen. I like having things at the center of my screen. I don't know why. Uh, either way, Wyvern over here, uh, when taking damage, gains two stacks of evading. So we will want to do damage as much as possible. Anyway, we will want to do damage to the Wyvern. Gains an out-of-turn action and resets cooldown when taking health damage there for the red cap. 
The red cap is going to be a while. So I think focusing on each one of these is probably going to be a good thing. Let's see. So uh, you don't have the bomb. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. You can move wherever you want. Hmm. Because I was going to blow up the, the thing. But obviously I can't. 60% there. It's possibly not an issue. Because if I move over here, that's 100%. Yeah. Evading, yeah. And then I do Hunter's Mark. Right there. And I'll also make sure that that thing doesn't allow me... After the target is killed... Because th there's some variation of this that makes so m makes it so that the shot never misses. Attack zone miss. There it is. That's that one. So that's pretty good. Obviously, that means I shouldn't have been, shouldn't have been here, but it doesn't matter at the moment. We're going to do that, and we're going to do the other one. Okay. So this is going to be that shot. But first... We send you over there. We have a war cry. What's the range on that? It doesn't say. To all nearby allies, including the caster. Hmm. That's not nearby. Shield block. Nah. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna activate the stand ready. And we're gonna attack with this. Yeah. And then we're going to take a shot that's always going to hit. But before I do that, I actually attack with a singe. It's not looking very good, actually. It's, real look it's looking pretty bad, if I'm honest. So, corrosive concoction. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Just go with it. And then you get a hit in there. And let's see what you do. Elusive jump. That's that's fine. A shoot for three. That is fine as well. And a four. Oh, wait. We're playing on easy, right? Ah, uh, it's going to be fine. Right? We're playing on easy. I'm not mistaken, am I? I might be mistaken. Let's send you over there. There we go. And then let's do the Grail of Valor. Do the war cry. More powerful. It's pretty good. And then you have six damage. Or ready to are ready to take six damage. Uh this isn't great. Hmm. That's a kill. Hmm. Oh, I can't do the corros corrosive concoction. So it doesn't quite matter. Uh well, in that case, efficient salts. To heal myself. There we go. Then you will attack here. This thing will only gain the out of turn action when taking health damage. And then you are probably going to be responsible for precisely that. No, not really. That's good. So I'll shoot the... Why do I do dumb things? Why, do, why didn't I see the, the chance? It's fine. We didn't lose anything. But still. A slow. Yeah, we want to be out of here. Yeah, they're just taking health damage. It's not a problem. So... Uh, I go over here and smack you. Right? Oh, that's a kill. Perfect. I'll shoot you again, maybe can't. I mean, I could, but I will take damage. Armor damage, specifically. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're gonna stay there. Absolutely. And uh, you're uh, you're gonna fall back. We, we don't want to be there. That place is bad. Just, uh, end. So, you're ranged. Hmm. Hmm. This doesn't use action points, so I'll do that. That's one hit, and then I'll do... Oh! 
Good. We didn't take health damage, I don't think. I don't think we did. With the abomination slain, he used the power of the Grail to purge the corruption of the Cataclysm from this place and emerge as the heroes of Birgelston. Maybe. Maybe Birgelston. Maybe other things. We don't, we don't know. We did take health damage, though. I saw that. Yep. In the distance, you see many bright pavilions upon a wide green field. The sound of merrymaking echoes. Or the sounds echo across the hills. A tournament! And uh, I am... How dreadful. <laughs> I'm going to attend a tournament, naturally. Large crowds have gathered to watch the competitions and, of course, the jousting. Bards are singing, people are dancing, and for a moment, you entirely forget the coming oh, a cataclysm. Yeah, um, I'm going to participate in the jousting with Zahara. Or Zahra. 75. Hmm. Zahra decides to participate in the jousting. This causes some confusion at first, as the other participants are all men, but after some debate, it is determined that the rules do not forbid the participation of a damosel. Her first opponent is to be one Sir Grifflet, the younger, not the most impressive specimen of knighthood. And uh, we're going to choose victory. Oh, it's going to be over there for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Fuck. We chose defeat. Through, uh, though Grifflet almost falls off his horse before the jousting can begin, by some strange chance he unseats Zahra with his lance. The crowd laughs, and Grifflet seems surprised, but Zahra is furious at herself, and she gets minus power uh, th th for the next fight that will expire after taking damage. Leave in shame. Ah, probably wouldn't matter. We got a heroic node. Let's go for the heroic node, because of course we will. On a remote glade far from any village, you come upon an edifice resembling an ancient temple. Great heavy stones have been raised to form a circle, and, and old men in robes are gathered in their midst, chanting at the sky in the old tongue, and we're going to approach. One of the old men stops chanting and steps forward to meet you. He has a long white beard and an oozing strangely colored scar where his left eye should be. The wind speaks of your coming, and the earth... Trembles at your approach, champions of Merlin, he says. The spirit that guides you is weakened, but all the lesser spirits fear its dreadful will. Yet, who else will protect us from what is coming? I'm going to ask what is coming. The old man smiles grimly and points at his missing eye. Even to see it is beyond us mortals. I wish I could forget what little eye glimpse. The... Obli for oblivion seems sweet by comparison, but it is not yet my time to rest. What I have seen obligates me to act in defense of the natural world. The world of flesh and spirit, tell me, what do you make of Merlin? His power is frightening. The scarred man nods. Tell me, if our world is shattered, do you think he will grieve for us? No, but if he fights for us still. And lastly, the scarred man says, Tell me this. Ah, these your words. Is it you who speaks to me or Merlin? Merlin guides us, but he does not speak for us. Very well then. We will put our trust in you for good or ill. Take this relic and wield it. Or rather, its power in your cause. And we're going to thank him and leave for the light boots over here that uh, have a passive boost of plus one move. And uh, when used gains plus two move that uh, just last for that turn. Not too shabby. We have seen we have seen those boots before, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, pretty decent. Although, I'm, I'm, I don't have food again. At long last, you have arrived at the castle Corbenic. Here, the Grail was found, the Fisher King healed, and many other magnificent deeds accomplished. It is a place of great magic, sometimes called the Castle Adventurous, and it is under siege. At its gates, a vast behemoth of a beast howls at the sky. This abomination is an emissary of the Cataclysm, more than merely a sign of its coming. It is a mighty instrument of destruction. And we're going to shoot the beast and... Uh, on the next attack, Wilford gets more attack. That's pretty good. The arrow strikes the behemoth, but the, abomination, the abomination's hide is so thick that you might as well have tossed a pebble at it. But you have the beast's attention. It roars and turns towards you. And we're going to defend the gate for what feels like the fourth time? I might be wrong on that. I think it is the fourth time. This, this battle should be, should be straightforward. 
very powerful, everybody very powerful. This guy probably has a out of turn action. Yes. These guys are nasty. That that is that is oof. Yeah, they are nasty. Okay, so Zahra at the front. Uh, Wilfred right behind. I think we're going to be fine if we just stick together. It's probably not, not an issue. And it's also going to make sure that they, they all come into the same area. So that's case on that one. Okay, that's more or less the same order as it is. Okay, it's not fantastic. Admittedly, it isn't fantastic. Maybe I should have done that. How long does that last? Or the... Which one is it? No. The alcoholic things. Yeah, the extra move. Uh, I can't do it from here. But it doesn't really matter. Because what I want to do is I want to do the corros corrosive concoction. But I can't do it in an efficient manner. So I'd have to move you over here. And do this. Okay. Why is this guy so so damage resistance? Resistant. Hmm. Minus two armor damage taken from all sources. Kind of a bummer. Let's do... Wait. It's you? Wait. Don't you have the aura thing? What am I thinking? Oh, it's you, right. Hmm. That will... I will continue having that. Right. I still have it, right? Let me see. Powerful, yeah. I think that this affects... This. It does. Minus 10. That is, that is actually pretty awesome. It's going to completely remove the armor from this thing. She did not take any damage. Which is a surprise. You're going to take the Grail of Valor. And we could do the Black Hole. For good measure. That would be very interesting. It does damage for days. Is it a waste? It might be. So this will... Once at each enemy that moves within melee range. Okay, so it is each enemy. But it moves within melee range. It's not attacks in melee range. Hmm. Soundtrack right now. Really hype. Okay, so... Uh, so... If I do the Hunter's Mark there and attack you, you're not going to be in melee range. Or rather, it is possible that this thing moves, but I find it difficult to believe. Okay, that's that's reasonable. That's, that's pretty good, actually. That's, that's quite good. Hmm. The problem is a lot of them move. So I think this is a good opportunity to do this, because it's going to kill them all. I swear it was going to do more damage to this thing. Oh, it also destroys cover. Yeah, I swear, I swear it was going to do more damage. Is it because of you? Does it change? What? No way. It changes the damage output? Because of your power? Power 7, power 8. It doesn't even make sense. But he definitely is going to do more damage. Look at the damage that does. I'll go for it. It was a miss, unfortunately. The wyvern is there. Okay, I can do that. And... Yeah, I might as well use the shield. And you can attack the wyvern. You can't attack the wyvern, but you can if you move. 60%. I don't like it. 
Landed it. Lovely. Okay. It was a bit of a waste. It definitely was a bit of a waste. But I'm fine. The war cry is, is very powerful. I, I I'm very surprised that it works. It works the way it does. It does require me to. Um, well, I'm not very surprised that it works the way it does, but it, I'm I'm very glad that it works the way it does. Um, it does require me to mess around with things, with positioning and all that. There we go. We got two mana out of that, so we wasted only one. That's fine. We're playing on easy. I wanted to see that ability work anyway, and uh, you had def def defeated the enemy. I better. It is done. The mighty behemoth has been slain, and Corbinic has been saved from the cataclysm. The lord of the castle comes forth to meet you. His name is King Percival. Once he was a knight of the round table and an instrument of Merlin, but now he has become the Grail King, protector of the secrets of Corbinic. I'm going to humbly greet King Percival. Welcome to Corbinic, champions of Merlin, the Grail King says with a bright smile. You are surprised to see that he appears as young as he was when he first came to this castle. Alarmingly, he is bleeding from many wounds. Ah, yes, my wounds. Do not worry. It's fine. We have seen this before. The despite, uh, despite the siege, Corbinic is most beautiful. Yes, yes. A reward, 65, thank you. A ship will be waiting for you. Until then, we will make certain... Yep, yeah, that's all as before. And uh, we can visit the healer, which we do not need. We can visit the market. Uh, we can visit the relic shop. There's the discount here. Uh, well, I need to visit the stalls, what I need to do, and purchase supplies. All the supplies. Just all the supplies. That's it. That's just, it's, unfortunately, it is it. I can undo some of that stuff, but yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate. The bearer is granted two stacks of elusive. For 23, that's pretty decent. I might actually want that better than the move. Unuse what happens, plus evasion. That is pretty great. Oh, the Caustic Vial. Uh, deals extra damage to armor equal to 50% of the attacker's power. Loses one per strike. It's two stacks. That's really good. That's really good. It doesn't have... Oh, that's really good. So I would have to give it to the person with the most power, which I believe is Akhra, which is not good. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have to, but do I like it better than Light Boots? Actually, I do. So that specifically... Uh, it just applies Caustic Weaponry to a, an ally. That's gotta be so powerful for her, though. Because that's 50%. That's it, it loses one stack per strike. But a strike is an area of effect strike. So area of effect attacks, like hers, are just gonna be demolishing, the, or just gonna destroy completely the, the armor of enemies. And I'm down to one gold again, because of course I am. Oh my god. Anyway, um... That's it. Let's retire for the day. The serv a servant of King Percival brings you to a room set aside for you. It is the most luxurious place you have seen in some time. And though your dreams are very strange, in the morning you feel rested and ready to continue. And the party gains well rested that expires after one fight. For plus two move, plus four mark maximum armor, and does not decay. And off we go. Your journey has brought you to the Marca Hispanica, a wild mountainous region between the Frankish kingdoms and the southern lands of the Saracens. No one ruler holds absolute sway here, and only and the only constant in the lives of ordinary people is war. You must make your way to the Roncevo Pass, and there cross into Al-Andalus. The power of the cataclysm is growing. The massacre you find before you now bears testimony to that fact. Hundreds of Frankish knights lie dead, torn apart by abominations. A savage battle was fought here, in which victory was gained only at the cost of total sacrifice. Because there are no... There are no... Uh, more... Total sacrifices, because... The, 
there are no more survivors? That does make sense. Total sacrifice. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, there are survivors. The few, uh, the few survivors, battered and broken, have gathered around their dying leader. By his coat of arms, you recognize him as the Paladin Roland, one of the greatest knights of his age, and a, a champion of Charlemagne. His side is torn and blood drips from his lips. When he sees you, his eyes brighten and he gestures for you to speak to him. I'm going to kneel before Roland. I can see. I can see what you are, Roland stammers or stammers, as blood gushes from his mouth. Malgris was right. Merlin is... Merlin is alive. Take my horn. Find good men willing to fight. Meet my army at Roncevo Pass. You must. If the pass falls, if the pass falls, we all fall. His eyes fix on something far beyond you. Forgive me, he whispers, and then he is gone. And we get Roland's horn, which is the only thing you can rely on, honestly, which is also pretty good. You take Roland's horn, famed of song and legend. His surviving men do not object. They nod silently and set out, limping, to prepare for the coming battle at the Honsevo Pass, knowing it will most likely be their last. It is... well, it, it, I don't remember, actually, what happens when we save them. But I think we did that when the only time we finished the game. But for right now, I'm Kirtle RPG, and this has been The Hand of Merlin. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.